Welcome back. Software firm Sandbox AQ announcing today a partnership with the Defense Department to protect against AI and quantum cybersecurity threats. Joining us exclusively on the deal is Jack Hittery, CEO of Sandbox AQ. Welcome back, Jack. Congrats on the deal. So talk to us about what you're going to do for the Department of Defense. Uh, good to see you, Sarah. Uh, this is an exciting announcement today. We're making exclusively on CNBC. Uh, we're announcing our contract for Active Guard, which is our cyber platform that protects against AI and quantum threats uh, for the Pentagon. Uh, this software has been in testing for over two years uh, with the Pentagon and DISA, their information systems agency, uh, and it just went live now in production. Number one, the AI attack. We know what happens there on November 14th, and Thropic announced as an example that uh, the Chinese, a state-sponsored actor from China, uh, use Anthropic's Claude code generation tool to attack 30 different U.S. firms, 30 different firms using Gen AI uh, embedded in those firms as the vector of attack. This is happening more and more, not just with Anthropic's uh, Gen AI, but all Gen AI. So the good news is that 75% of all companies across the U.S. and the Fortune 500 are using Gen AI and they're gaining productivity for that. The bad news is that usage of Gen AI introduces huge vulnerabilities. Only 6% of firms have a cyber uh, defense plan for the use of Gen AI. So we were just talking about this from China, actually. So, so is it a mistake then for the U.S. to be able to sell NVIDIA's H200 AI chips to China? Well, that, that's a different story altogether. But on that particular point, one thing to keep in mind is that while we do want to constrain China in terms of access to hardware, we also have to be mindful of the Chinese chip companies. Uh, More Threads is a Chinese uh, chip company that just went public. Uh, the IPO was a big success there. And in fact, the founder of DeepSeek uh, was one of the big winners and investors in that company. Mm. There's an ecosystem there that is now betting on domestic Chinese chip firms such as Huawei, uh, More Threads, Cambricon, and others uh, to win in that game. So we want to also make sure that we in the U.S. with our firms like NVIDIA and others have a level playing field to access all markets around the world. So there's definitely a balance there. But, but coming back to China on another front, uh, one of the areas that the Pentagon is very concerned about is the quantum attack from China as well. So we have the AI attack using Gen AI as a vector uh, for infiltration into U.S. companies and into sensitive areas of the Pentagon. Uh, we need to protect against that. That's what we're doing now with Active Guard. And we also need to protect against the upcoming quantum attack. The Q day is coming up uh, in the next number of years, and that's the day that uh, Chinese quantum computers can start to deconstruct and get into RSA and other encrypted material. RSA is what the Pentagon and all U.S. companies use to encrypt material, to transmit confidential information across the Internet. This goes down with the advent of uh, and rise of scaled quantum computers. So two attacks, AI and differently quantum as well. All right. Uh, Jack, over the weekend, it was Saxo Bank that had their list of 2026. They call them outrageous predictions. But one of them was that Q-Day would arrive next year. Bank accounts, they write, emails, digital wallets are no longer encrypted, which leads to the collapse of Bitcoin, unquote. Is that too early? Uh, well, they put it in their claims, and, and I know that, but uh, Q day is definitely coming. Is it coming next year? Probably not. I wouldn't agree with that timing. But is it coming in the next few years? Yes. It is clear. The Chinese have made it clear. They're not hiding it, Carl. It is in their plans, and they make very clear milestone developments and accomplishments towards Q day. They have a very, very strong program under Pan Zhangwei, a very well-known physicist. They have more than uh, 1,000 people working on this issue, on this Manhattan Project, to create a quantum computer that cracks the cybersecurity that we all use every single day. Uh, when you're on WhatsApp, Carl, and it says encrypted end-to-end, -end, that yeah. encryption is the one that will go down. Not to mention the SWIFT system, not to mention the banking system, the telco system, the electric grid, and, of course, back to the Pentagon, our story today, uh, protecting the Pentagon against those quantum attacks. So um, I appreciate the Saxo Bank putting it out there, but it's coming up very soon. And here's the point, Carl, here's the serious point. 
that it takes a while to transfer to the new uh, cybersecurity that protects against quantum attack. Uh, the Pentagon, to its credit, has been now working on this issue and now uh, just in the last month has now adopted Active Guard, our software, which protects it against this. But we now need the hundreds of large companies and SMBs to also move to the new post-quantum standards that were issued by NIST. Just this past week, NIST also reiterated its new standards mm. and set forth officially those standards as the final, final standards that just happened the last week on the NIST website of the Department of Commerce. So kudos to Secretary Lutnick and the Department of Commerce and all the folks working there for really trying to protect America in terms of these standards. Jack, before we let you go, I just wanted to run this by you. We got we got a new memo from Howard Marks, you know, longtime credit investor on, on Wall Street from Oak Tree, his must read memos, writing about AI, um, tackling the issue of, of bubbles, but also of jobs. And, you know, he, he definitely talked about the fact that he's concerned that a small number of highly educated multi-billionaires living on the coast will be viewed as having created technology that puts millions out of work. The societal issues here. This promises even more social and political division than we have now, making the world ripe for populist demagoguery. It's not a pretty picture. What do you make of those comments? And that is a fear. I think Howard's on the mark in terms of um, getting in front of this issue. Uh, when we look at software-based AI, which is the AI we have today from Google Gemini, Anthropic, OpenAI, ChatGPT, uh, already having impact, actually having more of an impact on white-collar jobs than blue-collar jobs, blue-collar jobs are actually increasing with the number of AI data centers. Uh, recent reports are that we're seeing a significant increase in the need for construction workers and other blue-collar jobs precisely because of the AI infrastructure investment boom that we're undergoing for the next five to 10 years. So I think that's one important point. The second though is on human robotics. Uh, human robots, uh, you and Carl and others have been doing stories on Optimus from Tesla, on Figure AI, on any number of robotics companies out there. They're not ready for prime time now, but they're coming over the next five, six years. My recommendation both to company CEOs as well as to the government uh, is to get ahead of this issue and go in for retraining programs that allow people to transition to this new economy. Here's the good news. We're going to be creating a lot of new jobs in this economy that don't exist yet today, but we've got to make sure we get ahead of this. Howard is on the mark. I, I, you saw his other line, Howard's, I find the resulting outlook for employment terrifying. Yeah. No. Again, and that, I, would, I would just add, Carl, I would add a codicil to that, which is terrifying if we don't get ahead of it. I think right. we've got to really be proactive here. This is not something you could just sit back and say, the market will solve this issue. We've got to lean in really heavily. This is moving very, very quickly. Good news on the infrastructure side, all that investment, you hear about the hundreds of billions of dollars in data centers, in chip factories. One of the things I think we must focus on uh, to the employment issue, Carl and Sarah, is bringing domestic manufacturing for advanced materials, advanced devices. When we think about magnets, people don't often think about how important magnets are in a society. You don't have a car without a magnet. You don't have an airplane without a magnet. Fighter jets, yes. a lot of advanced stuff have magnets in them. We need domestic production of those. Domestic production of batteries needs to go up. Right now, uh, the Chinese company CATL dominates the space. Need to bring that home-based here need to look at a wide range mm -hmm. of stuff that we need to make here in the U.S. That is how we get in front of yeah. this employment issue. Well the, well, the administration is focused on that, and we've heard a lot about magnets lately. So, Jack, thank you for joining us on a range of issues, but especially breaking your news there about the deal with the Defense Department to protect against AI and quantum cyber theft. Jack Hittery Great from Sandbox AQ. Thank you.